Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher. In today's video, we are going to be talking about flame tests and this is part of the GCSE chemistry paper two content. So if you do find this video helpful and you enjoy it, please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up, sharing it with someone else and joining our community by subscribing. Thank you so much for your support. So when we talk about flame tests, we need to be aware of the fact that metal ions form when atoms of metals lose or donate an electron and this forms a cation or a positively charged ion and all metal ions will be positively charged they can be positive with just a one positive charge or plus two or plus three or four or whatever the case is depending on how many electrons they are donating but they are referred to as cations in the exam and just in chemistry in general so just make sure you know the difference between an atom it's not charged and an ion that is charged because it has donated an electron in the case of metal ions. So we can test for different metal ions using a flame test and you'll need to use a Bunsen burner for this. So make sure that you're standing up when you do this experiment, you're wearing goggles, hair is tied back. If you're wearing any clothing that's maybe quite loose or flowy, that is clearly away and tight away from you. So you're not gonna get it near the flame. But when you are using a Bunsen burner, you need to know there are two different types of flames that you could use. The first flame of a Bunsen burner is often called the safety flame. However, it's definitely not a safe flame to touch or mess around with because it actually is still a flame. It's still a fired source. So you need to be careful and wear goggles around it. However, the reason it's called a safety flame is because it's less um, of a hot flame. It's still warm, still hot, but it's compared to the blue flame, which we'll talk about in a second, it's less hot than that one. And this is because the safety flame is showing incomplete combustion. So the hole is closed when you twist it on the Bunsen burner. However, if you open that metal um, cylinder shape, you'll see that the oxygen can flow through the flame or flow through the Bunsen burner this time. And when methane is burnt, it actually forms a roaring flame, which is blue. And this is because complete combustion occurs as that hole is open and lots of oxygen can get to the fuel source. You will need to use a roaring flame for this experiment. The method is as follows. So you want to submerge a clean wire loop into the solid sample you're going to be investigating. And a lot of metal ions actually are in like a white powder form. So they're hard to identify unless you use a flame test to do so. As you place the substance next to the flame, you don't want to put it directly into it, but just on the side of it, you should see a change in the flame's color. And this is because of the type of iron that is present in the substance that you're observing. You want to write an observation and record this in a table. Something to be aware of as well, every time you use your different substances, your different metal ions, the different metal ions will have their own flame color however if you have a mixture of ions together it actually can make the observation a bit more challenging so you want to make sure you are cleaning off your um, loop or your wire loop each time just be very careful because it is going to be very very hot as it is a metal and it conducts heat so here are the different results that you should see. The first one is lithium. It forms a Li plus ion. It has a crimson flame. You've got calcium that forms a calcium two plus ion as it's donated to electrons. That's where the two plus comes from. It produces an orangey red flame. The copper ion is two plus as well because it also donates two electrons to produce a green flame. You also have a sodium ion, which is Na plus, and you have a yellowish flame for this one. And lastly, you have a lilac flame in the presence of potassium, which is a K plus. You can see that most of those metals that are formed all have a plus charge, um, just one plus. However, in the case of calcium and copper, you can identify those because they have a two plus charge as well. So just be aware of the ions that form and also the charges that they have. So I've separated those for you to help that with your revision. And that's it from me today. I've been the GCSC science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone else and do subscribe. We are so close to 100 subscribers here on my channel. So it'd be amazing to have you as part of our community. In the meantime, if you would like to check out any of my other videos on biology, chemistry or physics GCC, I have linked some for you. Also my social medias, Instagram and TikTok are there for you to look through if you are interested in learning more bite-sized revision for biology, chemistry and physics GCC. Everything is at the GCSE site 
science teacher. And if you have any questions or queries or would like to learn more, please feel free to comment down below or request any videos. I am more than happy to uh, look into those for you and make some that could help you with your revision. So do let me know. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.